Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshal. Today, I want to address an email I got from a viewer regarding a video I posted yesterday. Uh, actually, I posted it today, but I'm filming this on the same day I posted it, so but you know what I mean. Uh, they said that they found it kind of disheartening that I was trying to make excuses for people that are talking about civil war and that are wanting to overturn the election for Donald Trump, that I'm making excuses for all these Trump tards and it makes me look bad. Uh, and why am I doing that? Well, uh, I want to address that question, but first I want to actually read what they actually said, because I don't want to paraphrase this question because I'm afraid I won't do it justice. So uh, I've actually uh, printed it out here and I'm going to read uh, most of it here, the important parts for you guys. So bear with me here while I read this. This is the email I received from a viewer. Uh, let me start where, where I marked to start. Uh, I find it offensive and disingenuous that you try to make certain types of viewers happy by trying to justify their crazed actions. You know in your heart what type of people these really are and why they are doing the things they are and why they are doing the things they are. You have been to a rally, I'm assuming they mean a gun rally, and have seen firsthand the type of people that show up. These are the same people. Tell me that you would actually like a single one of these people personally or would want to spend time with them in any other setting. Uh, stop trying to make friends and win favor with stupid rednecks. It just makes you look bad and helps to normalize their behavior. Uh... Well, uh, where to start on that? First off, I think anyone that watches my channel knows that currying favor or making friends is not my goal. <laughs> and I really don't do anything to try to foster that idea. So I don't know where you would get that. Uh, as far as defending these people that are doing these things, I'm not trying to make excuses for anyone. I said very clearly, anyone that engages in sedition without evidence, in my opinion, is uh, a traitor. You got to have evidence if you're going to engage in sedition. Which is why I'm like, you know, I don't mind the senators objecting tomorrow and wanting to have debates over the evidence. There's nothing wrong with wanting to see the evidence. If then there's no evidence presented and they still refuse to accept the election, well, then that's another thing. Or maybe there's evidence presented and there's something that needs to be done. But just asking to see evidence is not a bad thing in my mind. And the defense I made of people that are you know, talking about uh, civil war and boogaloo and all other stuff. I stand by that. I just think there's so many disenfranchised people. I don't think it's all about Trump. I don't think this is just all Trump supporters. I think this is people that are really sick of the way things are going. They're sick of seeing our, like I said, our liberties chipped away. They're uh, sick of being disenfranchised, uh, discriminated against even. So I stand by that. Uh, and as far as would I like any of them personally, you know, that doesn't matter. Just because I don't like someone doesn't make them a bad person. Just because I don't agree with someone doesn't make them a bad person. Uh, just because I look at someone and go, I want to cross the street rather than get too close to that person, that doesn't make them a bad person. That might make me a bad person. Uh, so I don't buy that stuff. I am someone who has said, if you've come to my live chats for any period of time, you've heard me say at one point in time or another, I believe that the vast majority of people are good. They're good people. And they don't engage in just violence and anarchy for the sake of it. Like I always use the example, I say, I think most people are good. I just doesn't mean I think they're smart. I think a lot of people are ignorant and they believe things that are false because they don't educate themselves. But I think they're good people. And I use the example of if you put 100 people, random people, one at a time on a riverbank and threw a puppy in the river, I think 98% of them, even if they didn't know how to swim, would jump in and try to save the puppy because they're good people. Same thing with a baby, but I like saying puppies better because I'm more likely to jump in for the puppy myself. So I think 98% of them are good people that would do the right thing. Now, would I trust any of them to do my taxes? Probably 98% of them I wouldn't trust to do my taxes. But being smart and being good or being uh, educated and being good don't aren't the same things. They're not, you know, mutually exclusive or uh, tied to each other. There's not required to be one to be the other. So I don't think they're bad people. Now, as far as the would I like any of them, 
Uh, probably not. I don't like people. In fact, if you look at a picture that uh, I had in the thumbnail of that video yesterday, which they referenced in their email also, if you look at most of the guys in that picture, yeah, I probably wouldn't like most of them. Like I said, I don't like most people. I probably wouldn't want to hang around with them. I don't want to hang around with most people. That's why I live out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, if you look at these guys, uh, some people will say, oh, see, it's just a bunch of rednecks and it's just a bunch of assholes and it's just a bunch of conservatives and white old men and all this other stuff, uh, which was covered in that letter and insinuated in parts of that letter. But I think if you look at this group, it's kind of a diverse group. I mean, there's not a lot of uh, racial diversity here. I don't see any black guys, although this guy could be black. I don't know. I can't see anything of him. Uh, and for all we know, Colin Noir is there. Uh, if Colin Noir was there and he was standing behind any normal sized person, you would never know he was there. So maybe he's there. So maybe there is some black people here. I just can't say decisively whether there is or there isn't. And also, looking at this guy right here, I think a lot of people are being very uh, cis-judgmental in this and saying that, oh, they're just all white men. This guy right here looks to me like someone who most definitely identifies as a small Filipino woman. So you go ahead and make your judgments about him. Like I said, that's very cis-centric of you. You've also got the gay community represented here with this young lady in the front and her uh, wallet chain. Uh, now, y'all might say, well, that looks a little bit large and hairy to be a lesbian. Uh, not northern lesbians. We, it gets cold up here. We got some pretty hairy lesbians, and no one else wears a wallet chain but lesbians, so we know that's a lesbian. So there's possibly a little bit of diversity here, and there are different ages. They're not all the same age here. I see some young people here. But even if they're diverse or not diverse, would I like any of these people? Like I said, probably not. Like I said, uh, not a big fan of hanging around lesbians. I find we have very different sense of humor, so this guy's out. Uh, I don't have much in common with little Filipino women, so this guy's out. This guy looks like a pretty normal guy, but, you know, he's a redhead, and I think he's carrying a Springfield Armory based on the grips right there. So probably not going to be uh, exchanging Christmas cards with this guy. Now, I definitely don't like these two guys because they look like they're posing for the album cover of a grunge or an indie rock band. Like, you know, one of those album covers where they're all standing facing different directions and no one's looking at the camera. I don't like that. So I don't like either of them. This guy, just the fact that his mask is crooked just pisses me off. I just want to kick him in the taint. So probably wouldn't want to hang around with that guy. And this guy, you know, top button done, pants way too tight. Probably not going to be my best friend. So probably not going to be hanging out with that guy either. This guy, uh, yeah, he's just way too excited to be there. I don't like anybody that gets that excited about anything. Uh, the guy over here to his left, or his right, actually, to the left of him, this guy's literally wearing a hat on a hat. Uh, already, I got serious problems with that guy just for that. This guy over here, clearly staring right at the camera. This is one of those social media glamour queens. He's obviously just there to look good and, you know, do it for the gram. I don't really find the pretty ones that interesting. This guy right here, uh, he's just posing too much. Uh, just he's trying way too hard. I don't like people who try too hard. And the guy next to him, uh, he doesn't even look like he knows where he's at. I don't think this guy's actually a part of this. I think he probably thinks this is the line for the beer truck and has no clue what's even going on. The guy next to him didn't even get the memo on which way they were supposed to face. So probably not a well-read guy there, or at least doesn't have good reading comprehension. So probably not going to be a big fan of his either. This guy, I just don't like his attitude. This guy over here, I like his neck scarf, but, you know, I don't like the fact that he's got the upside down flag. I don't like that at all. I like that. It's a little bit of hyperbole, in my opinion, so not real thrilled with him. This guy up here looks like he's afraid to be there. It looks like he's trying to hide. So is the guy over here hiding behind the sign. I don't People who hide behind signs, I don't have any respect for them. And then, of course, you got your Trumper up here. And it's not because he's holding the Trump sign I don't like him. He just has that face, you know, the kind of guy that looks like he's always angry and constipated. So probably not going to be spending a lot of time with him. In fact, the only person in this uh, whole group here that I think I could probably spend some time with is this guy over here. And that's mainly just to get the story behind those beard braids, those awesome beard braids he's got right there. But that's pretty much it for that. So, no, I probably wouldn't want to hang around with a lot of these guys because, like I said, I'm very judgmental and I don't like people. But that doesn't make them bad people. So this whole notion that I'm trying to curry favor with a certain group of people or make friends, I don't want any friends. I've got friends. Like I said the other day when I was confronted with the information that, well, we want to be able to travel when we retire. And I said, well, why do we want to be able to, uh, to travel? And I was told, well, we want to meet new people and make new friends. And I was like, no, I don't want to meet new people and make new friends. I'm hoping that most of the people we know now will die before we retire so we don't have to deal with them. So in the end, yeah, maybe I don't like these people. 
But I don't make excuses. I actually do believe that people are disenfranchised in this country. They're angry and they have reason to be. And just because I don't like them personally or wouldn't be their best buddy doesn't mean that they're not good people. And just because we disagree on something political doesn't mean they're not good people. So with that in mind, I want people to remember, I'm not making excuses for anyone. I tell, I call it as I see it. And as far as making new friends or just trying to say something to make people happy, that's just not something I do. Hey, the next thing I want to talk about here is I want to remind people that if you do disagree with something I say, just like I said at the end of yesterday's video, don't just make snarky comments in the comment section of a video. That doesn't take much doesn't take much of a man or a person to do that. It takes more of a person with guts or balls, male or female balls, to actually stand up and come in a live chat and talk to me face to face. Uh, people who can't talk to you face to face don't get a lot of respect from me. But if you've got something you want to contradict me on, or if you want to present what you call evidence for election fraud, or you just disagree with me on another subject, remember, slap the yank. Come on in. Talk to me. Show that you got a little backbone. Like I said, it doesn't take much to print something in the comment section. I don't care if you sit down and you write a 12-paragraph comment. I usually just delete it because I don't want that much space taken up in my comment section, and I ain't going to read 12 paragraphs. If you got something to say, come say it to me. It doesn't take anything to do that. That's the comment sections and the Internet itself, you know, that's the harbor of cowards. So I don't really take anything on there seriously. Nothing on there hurts my feelings. Nothing on there really impresses me much, no matter what you say or do. Uh, I might agree with something you say or do on there, but you know, still, it wasn't hard for you to say or do it, especially if it's something you know I might agree with. So I would have a lot more respect for you if you actually came in the chat, talked to me face to face. And this is for everybody, big channels, small channels, anybody who's just willing to come on and speak their mind. So just let me know. Like I said, send an email to shootingleftofcenter at gmail.com and in the subject line, put slap the yank. And then in the body of your email, just give me a general idea of when you want to come on. And you can let me know the topic if you want. I don't always have to know the topic either because that means I prepared. I don't want to be prepared. I like having it out one-on-one, -on -one, kind of uh, off-the-cuff style. So like I said, let me know if you disagree with me on something and someone has to disagree with me that's willing to actually talk. Come on in, slap the yank, and let me know why I'm wrong. Hey, next I just want to do a quick little bit of gun talk today. People have heard me talk in the past about the FK Burno uh, PSD that I like so much, and a lot of people are like, well, why wasn't it on your five best guns of 2020? Well, you know, it almost was. Uh, but the only reason it wasn't on there is because I, I just thought it was a little expensive to be on there. Uh, it cost a little much. Uh, other than that, I thought it was a great gun. It actually kind of brought like these uh, boutique weird guns that are always way too expensive for most people. It made one kind of affordable, so I almost did put it on the list. But uh, I wanted to talk today about, I got an email from uh, Rob Pincus. Pincus! And uh, they put out an email today letting know that there are some holsters now available for this gun. And I'm showing them here. Uh, there's a couple different holsters available. One looks like a duty holster. Uh, one looks like an inside waistband holster, maybe even here. Uh, but they got some holsters available now. And even more uh, kind of intriguing here, they have a pistol brace coming out for this gun. Looks like it replaces the magwell and uh, actually makes a pistol brace here. Looks very cool. Uh, very interested to see that. I don't think it's got a set date for when it's going to be available yet. But if you're someone that's interested in the PSD uh, or you already have one, there are some holsters coming out soon and possibly soon a pistol brace. All right. I want to end the show today as usual with our viewer EDC. Our carrier of the day is Glenn B. And as you can see here, Glenn B is carrying his CZ P01 in a hybrid, it appears, inside waistband. Looks like it's got a leather backing and a Kydex front, so that would make it a hybrid inside waistband holster. And as I said, he's carrying his CZ P01 in it. This is another gun that's very underrated. I think the CZ line of guns when it comes to concealed carry, I don't see enough of them. I like to see more of them out there because I think they are great guns. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of inside waistband carrier. I just don't find it as comfortable. But, you know, it works for a lot of people, and it's what a lot of people prefer, especially if they have to conceal. Now, I can't really talk about how he's carrying, though, other than the fact that it's inside waistband, because, to be honest, I can't tell from this picture where he's holding his gun at. I can't tell what position it's at. I can't tell front from back here. This guy is suffering, like I said, most of my viewers do, uh, from uh, gluteus deficiency syndrome, or whatever you would call it, because I can't tell front from back. Uh, looking at the pockets, I think, 
we're looking at the back and the front's up there, but I don't know. Then you look, well, is his, uh, but his belly looks like it's on. The, I just don't know from this picture. I can't tell. Uh, the, the no ass thing has really gotten out of control in the gun community. I, I hope someday someone comes up with a cure for that. But because of it, in this case, I just can't really say anything about where he's carrying because I just can't tell. But I want to, I mean, maybe he's got his pants on backwards. I don't know. Uh, but I just wanted to point out here what he's carrying. This is Glenn B and he's carrying his CZ P01, an underrated carry gun in a hybrid inside waistband holster. All right, everybody, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you come back tomorrow. And remember, tomorrow is the day they do the deed in Washington, D.C. So be prepared. Keep your head on a swivel. No one wants to get caught in a pop-up riot and not be prepared. Now, do I think it's going to happen to you? And do I think it's even going to be bad? No, as I've said, I don't think there will be as much violence as there was during the George Floyd protests. And I don't think there will be as many people participating as there were like in the March for Life. So I think it's going to be isolated, mostly nonviolent, and I don't think you got anything to worry about. But who wants to be caught unprepared? Always be prepared. That's one of my mottos. It's not my main motto. I'm not going to tell you what my main motto is because people would make fun of me. But uh, be prepared. Keep your head on a swivel tomorrow. With that being said, I want to remind everyone that this channel is 100% viewer funded. If you want to be a TYM Posse member, please go over to patreon.com forward slash the Yankee Marshall, become a patron of the channel. And with that being said, I'll just sign off today as usual by saying as far as the state of the world is concerned today, you know, it is what it is. But what things will be in the future if we keep working together, doing the right thing, paying attention to what's going on, ignoring the fear mongers, keeping our wits about us, what things will be in the future is better. <laughs>